I would like to show everyone how easy it is to write some source code that loads a neural network and then apply that neural network to some images. So we're going to create a neural network that can detect some simple shapes. This is what it looks like. So we've got triangles, rectangles, and circles. There's an image on the very right-hand side, which is what was detected. The second last image shows you the original image we're working with. And then we've got some regions of interest that are being output as well. I'm going to speed things up here. I'm using GIMP to create six training images, which have the three types of objects to be detected. There are circles, triangles, and rectangles. I'm just putting a random number of objects per image and I'm switching the colors around so that the network learns the shape and not the color. Next thing we do is create a new directory for the shapes project. Once we do that, we edit the names file to put in the three objects that we're going to be detecting. Circle, rectangle, and triangle. Save that file. Now I create a subdirectory to hold all of the images in my data set. There's only six images. So I'm going to create a set01 subdirectory and then I'm going to SCP all of the images that I created in GIMP into this particular directory. At this point I'm ready to start annotating images. So I start up Darkmark, I add the new project, it's called Shapes, and we see the six images in the project and start annotating them. Click and drag the mouse, select the class, circle, triangle, rectangle. Um, and then I realize, oh, I can use the snapping e feature in Darkmark. That's uh, shift D to turn, or shift uppercase D to turn snapping on and off, or in the settings, there's a toggle button in there, which makes it easier to annotate images when the background is a simple color like this. So we go through the six images, annotating every object. And at this point, we could start training, but there's a couple of things that... Um, that, that we need to do first. One, it would be helpful to review the annotations that we've done, make sure we didn't make any mistakes. Uh, but more importantly, too, for the network to, um, to, to function better, we need to add some uh, negative images to uh, the data set. So those are images that don't contain the shapes that we want. So I'm going to go back in GIMP, and I'm going to create just a few simple images um, that don't have circles, uh, rectangles, and triangles. So copy the new negative images into the dataset directory, restart Darkmark, and then using the keyboard shortcut N, uh, mark all those images as uh, being negative images. Next step is to flip and rotate all of the images in the data set. That'll take us from the 10 original images to about 100 and something. Once that is done, the next important step is to review all of the annotations that we've done. So scroll through the different tabs here. Make sure that all of the objects are annotated the way that you think they should be. This next step is very important. This is where the darknet files get created. So look through the options here. Not going to be anything in debug. Augmentation. We've already done our flip. Once you're ready, click on OK, and that creates the darknet files, uh, everything needed to train, including a script that actually calls darknet with the right parameters. 
So at this point, I go back to the command prompt, move all the files over to my training rig, or not move, but copy all the files over to the training rig, and there's a script that is created by Darkmark to copy all the files. And then I start the training. And in this case, it's a really simple network. I've got a fast GPU. It'll take about a half an hour to train. Note that the network won't be great because we're not training for long and we only have very few training images. We started out with just six images. So don't expect the, the results to be perfect. But this is just a, uh, a quick demo to show you of what can be done. Once you have it working, then you can continue to add more images, annotate them, and uh, get things working the way that you need. While the network is training in the upper half of the window, take a look at the commands that we're running at the bottom. So Dark Help has an example project, a very simple project. It's one CPP file and one CMake file. So I created a directory called source. I'm going to copy the example project into this source directory. This will copy over more than what I wanted. Uh, like it'll copy a readme file and there's a project file in there. I'm going to, I'm going to delete that. Uh, in the end, I just want the cmakelist.txt in the example.cpp file. I'm going to create a build directory and from within build I'm going to call cmake and then make. So the cmake file is really simple. It's going to find OpenCV, Darknet and DarkHelp and then it uh, compiles the example.cpp file. So my editor of choice is kdevelop. I'm going to start that up now and I'm going to create a project for those files that I just copied over. And I'm going to make a few modifications to the example.cpp file. There you go. So this will load the neural network on line 6 to line 14. And then uh, the magic happens from line 22, where we go through all of the files looking for PNG images. And then we, um, we call predict. With each image, we show them on the screen, and then we wait for uh, a key to be put to be pushed on the keyboard. So now we get the results from the training rig. You can see the uh, chart.png there showing us the results, and then we can call example to run our application. And uh, here we go. So all of the uh, regions of interest, so all the objects that are detected, are shown in a separate window. And then there's, of course, the original image on the left and the annotated image on the right. At this point, you can add more images, you can train for longer, you can add more negative samples. Um, lots of things that can be done to make this better. So there you have it, your first C++ application to load a neural network and do object detection.